Hi, Elizabeth from Storytelling with Data. Today we'll be talking about the differences between tables and graphs. So it's easiest to talk about this through the lens of a specific example. Here we're showing a table. This is from the financial services industry. And you can see uh, just by looking at the table that we're looking at enrollment in auto pay over time. Now let me show you the same data in a graph. Now, what do you see? So notice how much faster you can see the data in a chart versus a table. So you might be wondering, well, why would I ever put data into a table over a graph? And that's what we're going to talk about here today, because it's not always that black and white. There are reasons to use a table. So I should define what I mean by choose. This is a situation where you are working with data and then you're going to share that data with someone else. So a different use case from when you're working with your data independently and you're using different chart types to find interesting things about your data. The first is when your audiences need to look up specific values. So let's say it's the home equity line of credit that's gonna be most interesting to your audience. Maybe they need to know it's exactly 6% in 2020 compared to 13% or 48 or 65. That can be a reason to use a table because your audiences need that level of detail. Another reason might be you have mixed audiences. So let's say it's not the home equity line of credit, but it's also the credit card or perhaps the overall lines that your audiences need to see as important as the other one. Another reason to use a table would be you have multiple units of measure that you need to get across. So let's say it's the percent of enrolled, which we're currently showing, but it's also the number of accounts or perhaps the dollar opportunity that's that's associated with each. A table can be a nice way to provide all of these metrics in a smaller space. And another great place for tables is in the appendix. So this is where you can pack as much level of detail as your audiences might need or you anticipate they might needing so that that information is there for reference, but it's not impacting your main message. And you can preserve the beginning of the communication for that message for your audience. So let's take a look now at what this data might look like in a graph. So to convert this table into a graph, I'm going to build this piece by piece. So I'll take these categories and I'll put those in the top as a legend. Then let's move time to our X axis. So we can see it ranges from 2020 to 2023. Our Y axis is going to be that percent metric, percent of our customers that are enrolled in auto pay. Let's add the first year of data, 2020. And now let's add the rest of the data. Well, notice now how much easier you can see the differences in the data, which bars are the highest, which are smaller, how different they are from each other. And this is a reason to choose a graph over a table if we want to get that information across much more quickly to our audience. So that covers the differences between tables and graphs. Now that you might be left wondering, well, is this the right graph to use? Aren't there certainly other ways that which we could graph this data? And the answer is yes, absolutely. And we invite you to download this data and practice with it in our online community, which you can find a link to below. Links to a community exercise where you're able to practice choosing and continuing to improve the way in which this data is graphed. Thanks for watching today. I'm Elizabeth with Storytelling with Data.